Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Explorer Notes from Diana Alteras on Extinction. Diana was an armed forces fighter pilot from the future and we know that she was part of the URE, one of the two factions that had established itself on Earth towards the end of humanity. We're first introduced to the character of Diana back on Aberration. She initially only got 20 pages to tell her story and I've only done one video on Diana's notes previous to this, so you could be mistaken into thinking that Diana is a less significant character than the rest of our survivors. However, many of her heroic deeds and actions have in fact been told through the eyes of others. When we last caught up with Diana, she had just made a necklace she was planning to give to Mei Ying. Of course, we know through the eyes of the other survivors that Diana was murdered by Rockwell and died in Mei Ying's arms. So sit back, relax and enjoy part one of the notes from Diana Alteris on Extinction. Am I really alive? This doesn't look like any hell I've ever heard of and I feel like heaven would have better groundskeeping. The problem is, I'm pretty sure I died. I remember drawing that monster away from the gateway a ton of pain, and May's face looking down at me. I held onto that sight as long as I could, until the darkness crept in and I fell into a cold void. The rest is kind of fuzzy, but I remember a voice. Help. You have to help. And now I'm here, butt-ass naked with a familiar hunk of metal stuck in my forearm. Yeah, I'm definitely alive. There's no way this stupid thing would itch so much if I were dead. Guess that means I'd better make myself some clothes. Maybe some kind of ointment. Right, before things went crazy, Santiago mentioned something about human cloning chambers over the radio. That's the only explanation for this comeback tour of mine that makes any sense. I'm a clone, so does that mean I'm just a copy of the original? Or is it possible that my consciousness was stored somewhere and then put into my new body? This is so weird, especially since it's never happened to anyone before. We lost plenty of people back on the station, but not one of them ever come back to life. Death was a one-way ticket, period. So why am I the only exception? Is it that voice? Did it do this to me? Okay, this is creepy. The voice just answered me. It said yes. All right, time to pull the plug on all this soul searching crap. I'm positive my memories are real. So whether I'm some off brand clone or not, for the sake of those memories, I'm going to treat this like a second chance. There's no way I'm going to waste it. No way. I've got some basic equipment together now. And based on my surroundings, I'm definitely planet side. That means if the Gateway project was successful, then Santiago, Helena, Mei Ying and the others are somewhere out there. All I have to do is find them. The voice mentions something about help. If they're in trouble, then I hope they can hang on for a little longer. I'm on my way. I keep feeling these tugs on my mind as I travel. Like I'm being led somewhere. Under normal circumstances, I'd question my own sanity for trust in the guidance of a disembodied voice, but considering recent events, I think I'd be even crazier to ignore it. My creepy, unseen benefactors being pretty vague though. When it comes to dealing with these security drones and general survival, I'm on my own. But that's nothing I can't handle. The city's got tons of cover if I need it, and good vantage points for scouting ahead, so shaking off any bogeys shouldn't be a problem. I've got to say though, after all that work we put into escaping that station, it's kind of a drag that the planet isn't any better off. Figures, right? So this city's the ultimate fate of civilization, huh? A bunch of crumbling, overgrown buildings crawling with all the insects we left behind. I guess you can't say no one warned us. A lot of people fought real hard to keep something like this from happening, myself included, and it turns out the apocalypse showed up anyway. I always thought we'd stave it off myself. I guess I just believed in us, you know, humanity I mean, but even knowing it was going to end up like this, I don't think I'd do anything different. Regrets aren't my style, besides, there's a few of us humans still kicking, who knows, someday these buildings could be full again, but until then I get a spacious corner apartment rent free, not too shabby. They were here, no doubt about that, they're scoring from tech weapons all over, and while I can't pin down exactly how old they are, the gaps they burned into the foliage mean they're not ancient. The caliber on some of these are huge though, way bigger than a rifle. Don't tell me Santiago built a freaking tank. Guess I'll find out soon enough. The tugging on my mind is growing stronger. Something's nearby that the voice wants me to see. Whatever it is, I better take a careful approach. I'm not exactly brimming with firepower and I don't have May's gift for taming animals. 
so I'm all alone here. Can't afford any dumb mistakes. You really outdid yourself with this mech, Santiago. Even busted up and slumped against a building. It's one impressive machine, and looks like you made sure it went down swinging. Would have been a blast to put it through its paces together, like we did with that tech armor when we first met. It's not right that you died here all alone. After everything you did, the Gateway Project gave us hope for the future. You made it possible. Honestly, I'm not sure why the voice would bring me back and not you too. It doesn't seem fair. Now said voice is saying sorry over and over again in my head. Well, don't worry, mysterious, ethereal, whatever you are. For both you and Santiago, I'll make it count. Bank on it. It took a beating, but with a little more work, I think I can get this beauty running again. It won't take long to get used to the controls either. They were clearly designed so that even someone without a single hour in a simulator could take the wheel on a more basic level. But there's a lot of advanced settings here too. I'll have it dancing like a 50 ton ballerina in no time. It's enough to make a girl giddy. Santiago, if you were here right now I'd kiss you. You certainly deserve more than the grave I made for you. So I'll just have to pay my respects by showing off what your last brainchild can really do. Hope you're watching. Systems online and engines purring. My mech is go for launch. So whatever did this, better watch its ass. Payback's coming. I'm competent enough with tech armor and a rifle, but if you really want to see me make magic happen, put me inside a cockpit. I might specialize in fighters, but I've aced all simulations with just about every vehicle in the URE arsenal. Doesn't matter if it's got wheels, wings or legs. With a machine like this at my fingertips, there's no such thing as impossible. All right, my mystery voice. Keep that target locked for me. Reinforcements are en route. And you'd better believe we're bringing the thunder. My timing couldn't have been better. I followed the tugs on my mind until I came across a colossal walking forest bearing down on a lone figure. I'm not entirely sure what that thing was, but all it is now is the world's biggest salad. As for the survivor, I knew who she was before I even saw the hypnotic tempest in those eyes. Who else stands so tall in the face of death? Who else could call me here from so far away? Who else but you? Li Mei Ying. Considering I came all the way back from the dead, I probably should have had a better line in my back pocket than Miss Me Beautiful, but hey, I sure didn't hear her complaining. That May held out for so long might be a bigger miracle than my second chance at life. When the elation wore off, she practically collapsed in my arms, as if her legs could no longer bear the weight she carried. I haven't asked what happened yet, but I can see the hell she's dragged herself through in the rings beneath her eyes and the bruises on her body, not to mention her damaged mech. Just how many battles has she fought out here all by herself? Well, that ends today. After all she's done, she's earned her rest. It's my turn to take point. May's been getting me caught up while we repair her mech. Apparently her friend from the other station, Helena, became delirious after using some kind of artifact to fend off those big monsters. Long story short, that stump put her into a coma and she ended up dissolving into a beam of light. In other words, they were knee deep in some seriously trippy shit. Of course, I was recently resurrected and hear a voice in my head so I can't exactly throw stones. It's too bad about Elena. We got along well. Even though I only knew her for a short time and she risked her life to help us back in those caves. Whatever happened to her, I hope she's at peace. I needed to cannibalize some parts from my own machine to get it done, but May's mech is back online. Time to move out. At least if this mystery voice can be trusted. If you ask May, it shouldn't be. After all she went through with Elena, I get why she'd be cautious when it comes to unseen prophetic entities. But it's the same voice that led me to her. I can't dismiss it now. I should probably stop calling it a voice though. Thinking about it, it doesn't really make a sound. Its words just appear, like they were written in the back of my mind by an invisible hand. What should I use instead though? Does it have a name? Or maybe, did it used to? Weird it doesn't seem to know. We've been traveling together for a couple of days now. May hasn't let me out of her sight for more than 30 seconds. While it's sweet that she's been so protective, we've had to talk a bit about separating our relationship in and out of combat. See, while any good pilot has to watch their wingman six, they also have to trust their ability to handle themselves. If she's constantly trying to save me, our mechs are gonna end up stomping on each other's toes. I think she's starting to understand that. 
She didn't like my joke about getting another do-over if I bite it again though. My second coming sponsor wasn't laughing either. Apparently, it's not sure that it can replicate my revival. Fine by me. This last shot is all I need. Now that we're fighting in sync, we've been able to handle any threat this place has thrown our way. Piece of cake. Those big guys though, like the walking forest I took down or the ones that made these tracks, they might be trouble in a sustained fight. But based on what Maze told me and the hidden systems I've discovered inside this puppy, Santiago had already built the perfect counter for them. Originally, there were four of these mechs, and they were designed to fuse together into one giant badass super weapon. With firepower like that, we'd smoke these lumbering titans in an instant, but unfortunately, two of the mechs were abandoned in battle. Too bad, I'd love to have taken it for a spin. And that concludes part one of the no read through from Diana Alteras on Extinction. We will, of course, continue in part two. But before we get away, I just want to point out a cool little Easter egg that you can find on the Extinction map. If you just come to the western side of Sanctuary City, you'll stumble across Santiago's grave. This is, of course, where Diana buried him and carved his name into that stone. He's also got a cool giant mech sword as a headstone, so I thought it would be appropriate if we left the notes just here on this episode. And of course, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's been supporting me on the note series. Some of these videos can take two or three days to put together, so thank you very much for all of the kind words. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.